Hi, in the last video I talked about how we can set up a WireGuard VPN on an ASUS wireless router. And in this video I want to talk about four possible issues that I might face after I start using that VPN server and their possible fixes or workarounds. Number one. The VPN connection status on the client device is just not very reliable. So for example, in most VPNs, let's say in an open VPN client server scenario, when you want to connect the client to the server, you press this button and this is how the connection process starts. And if everything is fine, for example, the server is reachable through the necessary ports and there is no mismatch in the configuration of the client and the server, then I should get a green light which shows it is successfully connected. Now if there is something wrong, for example the server for whatever reason is not reachable or there is a mismatch between the configuration of the client and the server, let's say the username or password is wrong, then I'll get an error message and it will not connect. But unfortunately that's not the case for the WireGuard, at least not right now. Now let's take a look at three different WireGuard scenarios. In this one everything is fine and correct and the client should be able to connect. In this one though I intentionally disabled the VPN server. So the IP address of the server is actually reachable for the client but there is no active WireGuard peer on the server because WireGuard is disabled so this one should not be able to connect. In the last one, the client is not even connected to the internet. In other words, it cannot access the server, so obviously it should not be able to connect. Now let's try to connect all of them and see what happens. Strangely enough, all of them show that they're connected, or at least they give the impression that they are, but we know for certain that these two cannot be connected. Now I know WireGuard is still being developed and it's not 100% complete yet but not quite sure if this is actually designed to be this way or maybe it is something that they can fix somewhere down the road which I really hope they do. The bottom line is I personally prefer the OpenVPN approach here. I mean it can even make the troubleshooting much easier. For example if it doesn't connect then I know I can only focus on the connection part of the VPN. Or if it connects but I cannot access a local server I know I can only focus on that. But unfortunately with WireGuard if something doesn't work I don't even know where to start. Am I even connected? But of course I can always double check to make sure it is connected by checking the public IP address of the client after it is connected to the VPN because the IP address should change to the IP address of the server but it would be just more convenient if I could have that information in the client app or software. Number two, so what we discussed so far was actually on the client side. I mean it was hard to tell if it was actually connected or not but on the server side I mean the ASUS's graphical user interface we have a similar problem. Here I can see the list of all the clients that I have added to the WireGuard server. And at this point client number one is connected to the server and the rest of them are not. But unfortunately as you can see it just doesn't show me here that any of them is connected. In the OpenVPN though if any of the clients is connected it will show that here. I mean this could be a simple UI problem and if that's the case the fix shouldn't be that difficult but for now that it's not working an alternative way to see who is connected is by using the command line interface. So basically I just need to first SSH to the router and then run that command which should show me who is connected to the VPN server. Now if you're wondering how you can SSH to the router then feel free to watch that KB video. Number three. So this issue and actually the next one are not going to be only related to the WireGuard VPN and actually can happen on other VPNs too. But because some people asked about them I figured I should mention them in this video. So the VPN server we set up in the previous video had a public IP address which is good because public IP addresses are valid on the internet meaning that clients from all over the world could easily use that to connect to the VPN server. But what if our VPN server had a private IP address which is not valid on the internet. Private IP addresses are going to be only valid on their local area networks. Well in that case how could the clients connect to the VPN server? And that's something that actually can happen quite often. 
when the VPN server is behind NAT. For example, let's say I'm using a modem that was provided by the ISP and it is also doing NAT. Then in this situation, my VPN server will receive a private IP address which is only valid locally here. And the modem is the device that will receive a public IP address which is valid on the internet. But the clients should use a public IP address to connect. And they cannot use a private IP address because this is not valid on the internet. Now, one way to fix this is to put the modem into bridge mode. This way, the VPN server will receive a public IP address and the clients can use that to connect. Connect. But unfortunately, sometimes we just don't have that option here, which in that case, doing proper port forwarding on the edge router should fix the problem. So, for example, if the default WireGuard UDP port is used on the server, then this device should be configured to forward all the incoming UDP 51820 traffic to the server. Number four. Now, sometimes the VPN server already has a public IP address, which is good. But because most home internet IP addresses are actually dynamic, meaning that they can change from time to time, then as soon as the VPN's IP address changes to something else, then the clients will no longer be able to connect because they keep using the old IP address. One way to fix that is to get a static IP address from the ISP instead of a dynamic IP address. The static IP address will not change therefore I won't have that problem but this is usually not free and the ISP is gonna charge me for that so an easier approach could be to keep using the dynamic IP address but set up a DDNS a DDNS address will also not change and the clients can use that instead of IP address to connect to the server Now just keep in mind that if you set up the DDNS first and then set up the VPN server, then the system will automatically use the DDNS address in the VPN's configuration file instead of using the public IP address, which is good. So make sure to do the DDNS first. Now if you're wondering how you can set up the DDNS, then feel free to watch that KB video. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Thank you again and I will see you next time.